Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech Live Dreaming Network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Corey Nago from the Project Genki Alawai. Welcome, Corey. Thank you, Dr. Grace. Appreciate you having me. Thank you for being on the show. So we want to learn about Project Genki Alawai. Tell us about how you got involved and a little bit about the project. Okay, for sure. So the Genki Alawai project started in 2019 um, with the mission to use bioremediation, which is you know using good microorganisms to restore the environment. And the vision was to make the Alawai fishable and swimmable by seven years. So this started in 2019. Um, we are under the Hawaii Exemplary State Foundation, which is the, the nonprofit organization that we're underneath. And unfortunately, um, due to COVID, uh, the plan didn't, everything didn't go according to plan. Um, you know, the project didn't get funded and whatnot. But despite that, you know, the project members at the time decided to continue to move forward anyway, right? Because we got the permitting um, to use EM, the affected microorganisms for the Alawai. So um, we've been moving ever since uh, on a volunteer and donation basis. You know, this is a community effort. The, the, the only reason why we made it this far was because of the support from the community. So it's been a blessing. So with the Hawaii Exemplary State uh, Foundation, what does that mean? Really? So the Hawaii Exemplary State Foundation was supposed to be um, a systems approach to addressing the flooding and the remediation of the entire Alawai watershed. So starting with the invasive albizia trees in the mountains to removing the armored catfish, the invasive armored catfish from the streams. Our section was the Alawai Canal and there was another group that was supposed to be you know, monitoring the coral reef out there from the ocean. So systems approach, you know, something that's never been done before. And we were also supposed to be part of the STEM education program from the school. So, you know, all the schools in the Hokua, you know, letting them um, empowering them with the tools, you know, educating them and, you know, having them take ownership of their, you know, their aina, their land, their ocean, so that they can, you know, bring that, make, make it better for the next generation, you know, and as they grow up, you know, continue to take care of it themselves. So with the catfish, how were those introduced if they are not native species? That's a good question. I didn't really look into that. So I, I really don't know the history <laughs> behind that, but that's something I'll, I'll look into. Yeah, so, um, but with the Hawaii Exemplary State Foundation, so you were supposed to receive a large federal grant? Yes, um, I believe so. Dr. Ken Kaneshiro is in charge of that, and, you know, he's still um, going after that grant, and, you know, we have faith in him. You know, it could come any day, you know, as he's been telling us, but, you know, instead of just waiting, you know, we've been making moves with what we can, you know, and again, the community, the, the, the Genkyal Wire Project is a community project, you know, it really is, it's a community endeavor. You know, we've been, you know, expanded from not, not only the schools, but, you know, corporate sponsors, you know, private sponsors, you know, all of these people coming together, um, everybody from, you know, pre-K to Arkupuna, you know, everybody can get involved. You know, this is a project that, you know, we can all buy into, you know, a worthy cause. So it's been, yeah. again, we're, we're, we're just so thankful for the community. So let's have some pictures of the little Genki balls. Can you show us, Michael, what they look like? Yes. yes. Balls made out of yes. The idea originate. Where did it originate from? Great, great question. Yes. Yeah. So the Genki balls are actually mud balls, simply um, with good bacteria. Um, it's called EM. Effective microorganism is the main um, ingredient for these balls, and they were EM was actually developed in Okinawa, Japan, by Doctor Teruhiga, and you know it's been used all around the world. You know. From a little island to the to the whole world so it's very it was mostly known for agriculture but you know you can use it really for anything it, it's really holistic but it's usually in a liquid form but in this case we make it into a ball form so that it can actually sink to the bottom of the canal where um, all the sludges that's the main pollutant we're trying to address so to get back to your question about the ingredients you know it has soil rice bran which is basically the skin of brown rice you know the byproduct to make it into white rice and em the affected microorganisms and we have some molasses in there as well you know that that acts as the food for the microorganisms so really simple just um those ingredients soil rice bran and some em nice so um tell us about um 
how you guys came up with the idea to do this. Who was the person who started all this? Yes, why? so we were actually inspired by the Osaka uh, Fishermen's Cooperation. Um, they use um, EM technology and these Genki balls. We actually got the name from them as well um, to clean up Dotonbori uh, River in Osaka and to clean up Osaka Bay. So that river um, back in the day was kind of like the Alawai, you know, it was very infamous, you know, it was smelly, you know, nobody wanted to go in there. You know, if you fell in it, you know, they said you'll die. So that, that's kind of the <laughs> reputation that that river had. And um, because the fishermen, their livelihood depended on, you know, healthy, healthy water so that they can get the fish and their clams, they decided to do something about it. You know, they found out about Dr. Higa's EM and, you know, they took it upon themselves as a grassroots movement to really, you know, take care of not only the river, but the entire Osaka Bay. And, you know, they were able to do that, um, restore their, I believe it was like three, three to four years. Um, all the sludge levels went down, um, odors um, went away, and they were able to, you know, see their clams come back like fivefold. So it, it, it was a great result. And that's what really, you know, inspired us. Mm-hmm. And that, that was back in 20, uh, 2003, I believe. Oh, wow. and, um, they they finished in like 2005, 2006, and that was about the same time where the Alawai, you know, had that um, <laughs> sewage dumped into the canal, right? 48 million <laughs> gallons of raw sewage dumped into the Alawai, and, you know, unfortunately, a man passed away from um, that it's infection. Terrible. So that that's, I believe, yeah. you know, what really made the Alawai infamous, you know, after that case, you know, that really solidified it, so. It was around that same time um, that that all of that went down. So they really inspired us to, you know, make it happen over here. Because in Japan, there's there's um, lots of cases, you know, where they use this technology to clean up the river roads and ecosystems, you know, even around the world. So this is a proven thing. You know, this is not just a pie in the sky, you know, um, just trying trying it out kind of thing. Like there, there's proven cases and it's not a matter of, you know, if EM will work, it's a matter of will we make it work, right? So. I believe that we can we can do that. You know, Hawaii can just be another example, not only for it won't be just a win just for us, but you know, we can be an example for the, another example for the world. So show us some pictures, Michael, of these students that are involved, the students and teachers that are involved in the project. Yes. Of uh, Glory. Oh, so this um is a picture. Well, we initially started with um Alawai Elementary School and Jefferson Elementary School. You know, the Alawai that's there backyard pretty much you know they're they're right along that canal and you know it started with them you know the the teachers there you know they they embraced the project so um it's thanks to them that you know we're able to get get things going from the jump and this is a picture of them you know doing their initial toss um throwing um the the genki balls into the kapahulu end of the alawai and we started um here strategically because that end is the most stagnant um polluted um portion of the alawai um it, it for for those you know who don't know the Alawai Canal when it was built in the twenties it was actually originally planned to connect um to the ocean so both ends were supposed to be open but they realized that you know it if the Alawai connected to the ocean through Waikiki you know all, all the beaches would be polluted so you know funding had run out and you know they they realized the potential pollution so that's why it stops right there by the Kapahulu Library so we started there again because that was the you know the most polluted part the most stink part you know if you walk by there you know back in the day um if for for, for those that remember you know it was, it, it was unbearable but you know if you go by there now there's almost no smell at all you know so right. that's that's where we started so can you show us the pictures of the different schools on the website michael yeah and this is great there's so many people involved yes yes it Again, this is this is really a community effort, you know, starting with all these schools, um, you know, educating the kids, you know, while they're young, because our mission is to, you know, just really um, empower the, 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 the people of the community and to work together to restore the, the Alawai watershed, right? And you know, this project is really just the catalyst to open up the potential to clean up more waterways. Um, and... You know, that, that's actually happening um, today. Um, there's a collaboration between Kamehameha Schools and HCC. You know, they're calling it the Genki Kapalama Project. So the Kapalama Canal, you know, that's coming soon. So we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah, so um, why don't you show us the picture of the um, life, the new life that is swimming in the Alawai. We have some pictures of that. 
Yes. Um. Unfortunately, the left side was supposed to be a video. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, submit a picture. That's that's my fault. But um, you know, we've been seeing a lot of biological indicators. Um, anywhere from stingrays. You know, last year we had the um monk seal come through to the convention center side of the Aloai, which was you know unheard of, right? And that was right before um we did a toss out there too. So the timing of that was was unreal, right? And you know. People are sending us pictures of turtles, um, sharks, you know, just going there almost every weekend. You know, we see a lot of native fish coming back as well, not just tilapia, right? We're seeing um, ama ama, you know, we're starting to see mullets and like other small um, ahole ahole. It, it, it's, it's a sight to see. That's amazing. So let's go to the um, the collection sites. Um, can you show us the pictures of the different collection sites? Um, yes, yes, the the test sites. Yes. So because um, you know, we we can't just throw it anywhere. You know, as much as we would love to. Um, you know, we, we are data driven, so we um, do take before and after water quality samples. You know, just to measure the effectiveness of the project, right? So um, we have four test sites right now. You know, um behind the think tech logo that's where we started on the couple hula end of the canal that's where we do most of our tosses uh, number two is right behind alawaya elementary school um, by the community gardens out there and right across the street um by la nui kalaimoku street that area was sponsored by the ritz carlton residences waikiki beach you know they were um able to sponsor the water quality testing there so you know shout out to ritz carlton and number four by the convention center that was sponsored by the honolulu festival foundation so thanks to them you know, we're able to open up. So we kind of have two ends of the Alawai and the middle as well. You know, of course, we want to expand those sites and, you know, be able to take more data, you know, present more data to the public, you know, not just, um, you know, we want to be able to map um, where, where else the, the sludge levels, you know, elsewhere on the canal and, you know, take measurements there as well. But that's where we're at right now. So who's taking the data? Is it the volunteers that's taking the data and who's developing the data? That's a good question. So um, we do need, it has to be official. So in the beginning, the city and county was helping us out with the data collection. You know, we had a support from the governor. But unfortunately, you know, the, the Red Hill crisis happened. So, you know, all of their resources went there, you know, um, naturally. But luckily, we were able to partner with Ecos Labs, which is a third party, uh, another third party lab that has been able to assist us with obtaining that water quality data. But the, sl the sludge levels, though, that's just on our own. You know, we have our um measuring meter sticks and we just stick it in the sludge and you know it, it's been fun seeing the the sludge levels go down you know being able to see that for yourself and actually see sand on the bottom of the alawai you know i wouldn't have believed it until i seen it myself so so usually sludge just covers the whole bottom I exactly guess. yeah it, it, it covers the bottom it covers the reef you know pe people might not know but there's there's coral reefs in there you know and there's sand on the bottom and you know that's that's under all that sludge. So that's why um, we're making it into the ball form to remove, you know, the, the sludge layer by layer. So can you explain to us how the sewage gets in the alawai? Like, how does that happen? The I'm, not, I'm not too sure exactly how all of that sewage got in. You know, that's something I have to look into. But um, a lot of storm drains, you know, lead up to lead up to the alawai. So, you know, that 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 plays a huge role. And, you know, of course, uh, we have Palolo Stream, Manoa Stream, and Makiki Stream that feeds the Alawai as well. So, you know, a lot of the pollution from upstream, you know, that that's that's the main cause of. Yeah, yeah. yeah people need to throw away their dog poop and all that. Kind definitely, of stuff. definitely. You know, like um, and th this is a reactive solution for sure. You know, for some people that might be thinking, well, you know, um, if, if you don't address the issues upstream, the Alawai will never get clean. I mean, that's that's valid, but you know. We'll, we'll get there, right? This this is a this is a systems approach. You know, right now it's just the beginning. You know, getting people where you know empowering them with the tools, and you know, we we do see results though, right? So once we start um with with Alawa, you know, we want to work upstream, right? Using EM for the upstream, you know, into from the mountains, so that you know we'll get that whole effect cleaning the the whole watershed, not not just the canal. So let's go to the the current results slide, if you can, Michael. Yeah, so show us what this is. What does this mean? Oh, so this is um just the chart of the sludge levels um where we first started um you know from twenty twenty one um it shows where we first took the measurements of sludge and 
um, this was actually uh, a story that, well, I wasn't there, but my, my father was telling me, you know, how the city and county people were trying to take the water test and they stepped into the sludge like knee deep and they lost the slipper and you know oh they're like oh wow we found a sinkhole so that 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 was you know the the point where we started measuring that that sinkhole where you know he he went knee deep and you know since then it's been from over 20 inches to less than five you know that's that's a huge difference so you know seeing that um in just the two testing spots you know we we want to have more you know um elsewhere on the canal where we can you know take these measurements mm -hmm. And then show us the other slide with the um, the Enterococcus. I think there's a slide with Enterococcus. Yes, yes. So that is the um, fecal bacteria, you know, the main bacteria that people, you know, are concerned about. You know, it was, this this fluctuates, you know, according to rainfall and whatnot. But as you can see, you know, from 690 to 46, right, the acceptable levels are 130. So anything below 130 is um, is good news. So, you know, being able to see that go down as well is, is awesome. So I also see down here on the third line of that chart, like the aloe, it looks like it started off like less. Yes. 30. How is that even possible? You know, again, it, it just, it, it depends on the um the the rainfall and, and the different conditions and whatnot. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, but yeah, the, the timing of the test as well. So yeah. It, yeah. it does fluctuate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you go to the current results section in the uh, website? Yeah. So basically what we're doing with the microorganisms is um, just restoring that balance, right? And in any environment, you know, in any ecosystem, you know, there's microbes, they're, they're everywhere, you know, bacteria is everywhere, you know, in our bodies, in the air, in the water. So with EM, what we're basically doing is putting more good bacteria in there and, you know, just making that shift so that there, there are a lot of neutral or opportunistic bacteria who follow the leader, right? They're influenced by, you know, what there's more of. So if you have more good bacteria in the water and ecosystem, you know, all those neutral middle bacteria, they'll follow suit. So we're, we're just rebuilding the ecosystem from the bottom up, right? The, the food chain, microorganisms, they're the, they're the bottom, they're, but they're the foundation as well. You know, that's the most important part. Once you get that, good then you know everything else will flow nicely so that's that's the simple idea of yeah, using bio remediation i mean i see this too you have oxygen saturation test and yes it like it's greatly improved yes and here's even 135 percent how is yes that yes so the microorganisms you know they um oxygenate the water so it is possible to to go over um those right. levels yes yeah. <laughs> 100 was the highest and then there's the turbidity too that's gone down a lot yes yes also this thing salinity i was a little bit confused how that helps you because isn't that dependent on the water yes so that that is dependent on yeah like you said the water the rainfall you know and all of that but that's just um another thing that when when they take the water quality um tests that that's what they include as well so we just included everything that the state or not state the um well the state test for the Department of Health and, you know, the, the labs, the data that they give us, we just try to present everything as much as possible. How about temperature? Is a lower temperature better or a higher temperature? That's a good question. Um, Higher temperatures, you know, are usually breeding grounds for, you know, like the vibrio, like the fleshing disease that's naturally in there. So, I mean, it does um vary. Um, in terms of that, but with with when you have EM in there, even if the temperatures do rise, you know it keeps in check those other microorganisms, those other bacteria, viruses that you know may thrive. It keeps their levels in check. So, mm -hmm. and this uh, pH is it better for? Um, should the pH be around seven point four, more alkaline? I'm assuming and not acidic. I yes, yes, yes. More more neutral pH would be good. Yes, for sure. Yeah, there's so many things here. It's amazing. And I even have an ammonia test, a nitrite test. Can you explain that? Yeah, so the ammonia is, you know, the, the smell, obviously, but um, that fluctuates a lot as well. But, you know, I mean, if you're an Alawai regular, or, you know, you know somebody that goes there, I think, you know, just we, we've been getting a lot of testimonials from, you know, regulars, people that paddle there that, wow, like, you know, it really doesn't smell anymore. So... Um, although those numbers may show otherwise, I mean, just being there firsthand, you know, um, experiencing it for yourself, I think, is 
the the great the, the biggest indicator for that no that's great um so uh was there a reason that you and your father specifically got involved in the Adelaide? do you play golf near there do you paddle or... um so actually uh my father was again inspired by the osaka fishermen you know around that time where they finished um not finished um well where they really started seeing great results of you know bringing back their waterways um we had uh you know that that spill of sewage into our waterway right so he actually raised his hand at that time saying like you know we can use em to you know bring this back but unfortunately how the law is written you know you can't just pour anything into an open waterway so unfortunately at that time um you know we weren't able to get the permitting or whatnot you know i'm not too sure the full details of that but you know it's timing right you know there, there's a time for everything and you know in 2019 we we're able to get that so yeah here we are now um ma making it happen do you, uh, when you want to have a community event where you have the balls, yes, do you uh, have to apply for a permit for that or you just, um, how does it work each time? Yes, yeah, so it, it depends on the location. Um, you know, we do need, if it's on the promenade by the convention center side and whatnot or Alawai Elementary School, we, we need a permit from the state, you know, as part of the parks and recs. But um, luckily for us, you know, um, the Kapu Hulu Library has been a, a great partner, you know, since the beginning of the project. And our community projects are usually done there on their lawn. So, you know, we don't really need a permit there. You know, we, they, they've allowed us to, you know, use their lawn and, um, you know, make the Genki balls and, you know, throw it from that end as well. So, you know, shout out to Kapu Hulu Library, all the staff there. Yeah, so I'm wondering too, like if an independent group, say, wanted to make their own Genki balls and yes. put it in LOI, would they, how would they go about doing yeah, that? Yes, so we do um, work with, you know, corporations, companies that do want to just make it on their own. Um, a, a lot of the major hotel groups in Waikiki, you know, you know who you are, you know, thank you so much for, for all your support. Um, we've been working with them. Uh, we just, you know, they can make it anywhere, but when it comes to throwing, um, we, we just a project member would have to be there um, oh, okay. according to the permit, you know, just so that we can observe, you know, anything, um, if anything unusual happens or whatnot, um, yeah. we, we'd be there to report it. So that that's pretty much the main protocol. So we, we, we do not, you know, really recommend people just going out there and throwing it anywhere. You know, there are... Um, there there are rules and um, regulations that you know we we want to abide by you know just be respectful of so so i mean what percentage of the geki balls is actually the em so em is quite expensive i buy that online for my garden oh right on yes so, so to to make it cost I, I don't know the exact percentage of you know in, in terms of ratio to to solids to liquid or whatnot but um, we do make something called activated EM. So like you said, EM, um, it, it may seem expensive and that's because it's a concentrate. Um, so e regular EM can be extended 20 times. We make something called activated EM. So out of that EM concentrate, we'll extend it with the molasses and water. So that that's able to, you know, make a lot more economical for everyone. And I know you said that corporations have been providing some of the funds. Yes, yes, we've been getting a lot of donations. Uh, yeah, you know, like that. Is that all funded by sponsors? Yes, yes. Um, all, all the donation um that that we receive, you know, go towards well, mostly towards materials, you know, for you know being able to put on community events or you know just to support on um, the schools as well you know some some people some schools don't have like um, budgeting or like you know some other nonprofits that we partner with you know may not have the budgeting but you know because of those donations we're able to give back to the community you know they're able to you know pay it forward and you know support another community making event yeah no that's great do you guys have any i know i saw on the email that you guys have also you run a community event every month or something that yes Yes, and you know we would love to put on a lot more, but you know we, with our limited numbers, um, we're we're at one one a month for now. But we will we're looking to scale it, you know, in advance for sure. Um, we try to release the date um at the beginning of the month, but usually it's on the second to second to the last weekend or last weekend. So usually on a Saturday, and it will be at the Couple Hulu Library, and you know we try to release uh, information about that. Um, if you're on our emailing list or on uh, social media as much as as much as possible. 
So it's a few hours that you would dedicate. It's actually really quick. Um, making Genki balls, it, it, especially you know when you have a group that um is really efficient. You know we can make a thousand balls in about an hour and a half. Um, oh, wow. So so we we've been doing two sessions um because of the you know, we've been getting a lot of inquiries so we do about we do two sessions so about two thousand uh, Genki balls per community ah. event recently yes and you know we also give them an the opportunity to throw as well so it's not just making that's the balls awesome. it's throwing it <laughs> yes yeah no that's amazing um so uh, I I think you know I definitely want to participate in one of those sessions yes we'd love to have you we'd be honored to have you out that'd it's be wonderful fun. so um how many people you do you have in a core group of volunteers that you know leads the session usually yes so our main um or I guess the main members of the group official there's about five of us right now um six including Dr. Ken so we do have um a, a good you know, regular volunteer um people that come out often, you know, shout out to them. You know, they've been a huge help. So um we just wanna, you know, be able to organize that better on our end so that, you know, we can help um scale this project out, you know, so we can make that bigger impact that, you know, we need to make. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, what if somebody wanted to volunteer? Uh, how would they get in touch with you? You want to show that page? Yes, yes. If you could, um, you know, go on our website. There's our email there. It's genkialawai at gmail.com is our email. But you, know, you can find that contact information on our website or um, through social media. You know, we usually post on Instagram, but, you know, it goes on Facebook as well. So someone, you know, if anybody wants to get involved or help out, you can contact us through there. And are the uh the sessions you have to RSVP ahead of time? Is it usually um yes yes if you could just be, if you'd be so kind to send us an email you know we'll um send you all the information that you need for the events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how many people are usually there at the event? Like there's it... about wow I mean about six, 60, 50 to sixty people per session so awesome. a lot of people have been coming out it's a awesome. blessing. Yeah no um that's awesome well. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been very informative. I learned a lot about these Genki balls, and I think it's great you're doing this project to clean up the alawai. Um, we're out of time, so we have to wrap it up. Um, I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Cory Nago of the project Genki Alawai. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in two weeks. For more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My guest will be Kavika Carlson, founder of the Hawaii Running Project. If you have ideas for the show and questions for my future show guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at greaseinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.